Hi there, I'm Luke. Welcome back to Photo Buy, and today we have our hands on the new Huawei P30 Pro. Let's get into it. So this is the Huawei P30 Pro, and as you can see by the looks of it, there's a few things going for it, but we'll get to that just in a moment. We'll go through the specs first. So on the inside of the P30 Pro, you are looking at a eight gigabyte set of RAM. You've got a choice of 120 gigabytes of memory or 512 gigabytes. And with the P30, you just got six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of memory. So still very good options, but you'll see that the P30 Pro has a bit more to it. Other internals, you're looking at a seven nanometer Kirin 780 chip, which is very nice to see. Again, we saw that in the Mate 20, so it's not a new chip, but it certainly is a chip that has proven its worth. And then you've also got a 4,200 milliamp battery on the inside. So this should give you at least a full day of use, of heavy use, or two days of light use. So if you're a heavy user, do check this out. You've also got reverse charging, as you saw with the Mate 20. Whether you would use it is really up to you. Uh, it does depend what kind of gear you take with you. If you take a lot of uh, things that require charging, you can charge them wirelessly. It's a nice little tool to have. Have them both in your pocket and it charges them on the go. And plus with a 4,200 milliamp battery, you really can't go wrong. But some of the new features that Huawei have been raving about are actually on the P30 Pro. Just to go through the cameras, you're looking at a 40 megapixel super spectrum sensor. Now this is very new from Huawei. It doesn't run with RGB like you normally see. It actually runs with R YYB. So rather than being red, green, blue, it is red, yellow, yellow, blue. The idea of that is the green is quite a dark color and switching to yellow enables it to work a lot better in low light. And that's what this is designed to achieve. And by using it and testing it out, we've definitely seen that in its first results. Handles grain a lot better in the low lights and also in the shadows as well. And also what's new is they've added in a periscope zoom. So this actually has lenses going that way across the body rather than going down as it normally does with other lenses. This allows it to give you a five times zoom or 127 mil and you get really close up details of subjects. And you've also got a 10 times with that. So it's actually eight megapixel sensor sitting there. You can go 10 times, go to four megapixels and still get some very, very clean images. They won't be great for blowing up, but for social media, they'll be more than enough. And then when it comes to the wide angle, that's a 16 millimeter wide angle. That is perfect for getting those wider shots. We saw it with the Mate 20 Pro uh, in the first rounds last year, and now we're seeing it with the P30 Pro. So a very good array of cameras there. But one thing they've added on is a fourth camera. Now this is a TOF lens, the TOF. Now this is designed to help give the camera a sense of depth and also helps it put together a better idea of imagery. So when you're taking pictures of people, trying to get that blurry background and portrait mode, it does a lot better with the focus fall off, getting your subject in focus, and then blending that background out a lot more effectively. And it looks a lot cleaner doing it as well. So we're gonna head out, we're gonna play around with this camera and see what we can achieve. And also to see how good these cameras really are. So let's get into that. So before we start shooting and playing around with things, you've got to set up the camera first, which I say the phone. So you're gonna go into settings. We're gonna scroll down till we see the assistive grid. We're gonna turn that on. You also wanna make sure that the sound is on mute. Uh, you wanna also double check the resolution. Now, one of the more annoying things is, is that you do have a 40 megapixel super spectrum sensor in here, but at default, it'll set it to 10 megapixels. And that gives you full control over using the different zooms of the wide angle. Because I'll show you just now, if you go into the 40 megapixels and you go back, you will notice on the side, you do not have control of your other features like the zooms. And that's because it's putting all of the work into the 40 megapixels, which is really, really frustrating. We just go back into settings, we'll go back to 10. So just making sure that is all okay. Just scrolling down, double checking. Everything else is fine, audio control off, timer is off, and we're all good to go. So we're just gonna go back out of there. And now we're gonna go to settings. So this is to set up your screen. You wanna go down to display. You wanna go down to color mode and temperature and make sure it's set to normal. Sometimes we may be on vivid and then at the default have it on cold. So that's how you want it set up. At default, because this is, I'd actually transferred it from the previous phone I was using, it would have been on vivid and it would have been on default, which is fine. But for these kind of images, you want to try and be as accurate as possible. So I would go normal and go cold. And it just neutralizes the colors because a lot of phones and phone companies, they like to really enhance the colors and give you a nice visual experience when using the phone. So 
for us as photographers, we don't want that. We want to be able to create our own visual experience. So do those settings and we're pretty much good to go. What you also notice is on the top, you have control over your flash. You want to go no flash today. You don't want to flash anyone's face by accident. And you do also have master AI. So this will enable you to pick up on different scenes. If you, I only really use it for anything that's moving like children or you've got dogs, cats, you know, things that are moving fast, you want the camera to adapt to that quickly, you can use it. Otherwise, just have AI off and you can just start shooting away. So everything else is set up. Just gonna double check my picture quality. That's in standard, which is perfectly fine and we're good to go. So if we have a look at our scene first, let's have a look. Oh, I've got this one. So what you'll see is on my screen are the different options. So if I go wide, I'm just gonna tap on the 360i, boost the exposure a bit. Then you can see that's your standard 27 mil. This is now using the periscope. This is all optical. This is not actually using any digital. It only uses digital when we do, do that. So now it's a four megapixel uh, picture. So this is really good for getting those detailed shots. So let's just bring it back down to five. Like just that alone is really cool. Just going to tap underneath it to focus and take a picture. Now, just being able to see the detail in this picture is, I mean, this is an eight megapixel image. This isn't gonna blow you away, but for a phone, this is pretty incredible. I really like how it's balanced the details. It's also maintained the details in the shadows as well. Normally with phones, those will just disappear and you just got this black, horrible, grainy bits and pieces there trying to make up an image. This has got all the details that we need. And you'll see in the back as well, we still got blue skies, which is really, really nice. It hasn't blown anything out like crazy. Now, if we just move to where these posts are, one of the features that I like to use is when you want to focus on something. So let's say we want to focus just on this post here, but then we want to expose for the background. So I'm currently on wide. I want to tap on there. I want to hold it. And then you'll see this pops up. Now, if you see me moving it around, you'll see it changing the exposure. And you can change it around, tap on there. We can change our zooms, take a picture. So it's not an amazing picture to take, but you can just see how you can use it. You can try it with a few other things as well. I think what we'll do, we'll venture down to the beach and we'll really see how the zoom works because that's one of the main features about this is the zoom. We now have a lot more zoom to play with. With a P20, you had three times optical and five times digital hybrid. So it was using the collection of the cameras to try and get you a picture to use. But now we have five times optical and we can just go straight into using it. So what's really nice about this phone is the zoom. You've got a lot more zoom to play with. So you've got your five times optical, that is the periscope design that they used. And then you go into a hybrid slash digital zoom when you go to 10 times, and this basically zooms in on the sensor. But then what they're also talking about, that's Huawei, is you have to have to 50 times zoom. Now the way you do that is we'll just start down in wide, and what you can do is hold down on wide and then just zoom all the way in. And that, my friends, is your 50 times zoom. So it's not incredible. It's not amazing resolution, but it is a resolution nonetheless. In fact, there's a wind farm just out over there. So I'll start with that. So we'll go wide so you can see where the pier is. Then we're gonna go one times, five times, 10 times, and then we're just gonna drag that up to 50 times. Gonna hold it around a bit just so it can get a focus reading. You can see it's not overly sharp, it's quite pixelated. Snap a picture, and we'll go into preview. So it's not an amazing 50 times zoom. It's not gonna be pin sharp. It's a nice thing to show your friends what your phone is capable of doing but most likely you'd probably just be using the 10 times zoom, which if we're quite honest, should be more than enough because the amount you can get at 10 times is pretty incredible. Now, some of the other features as well, we'll just move on from the zooms. You've also got portrait mode. Now this is where the top lens comes in. This is how it's gonna break away your photos from other phone photos. And what I mean by that is it really focuses on the idea that you get a perfect blend in your pictures. So the top lens helps identify depth. So when you are taking a picture, it'll work out the camera's this far, cameraman's there, and then you've got the background to bleed out. 
Other phones will just take a cut out of the person and then just blow the background out, which is great, but it doesn't look realistic. The idea with the TOF lens is to make the background look a lot more realistic and it's blur. So if I just take our cameraman Jack here, we're just gonna take a picture. Take one more picture again. Tap on the camera, take a picture. And you can see that it's just trying to blend. So if we have a little closer look at that, so you can see how it blends a lot better. It'll work a lot better when you've got more things in the foreground. You can really see it bleed off. But that just gives you a better idea of its capabilities of what it can do. Also notice the stitching around the figure as well. It is a lot better, it's a lot more accurate. Bar a couple straps, I mean, these are things that can be fixed with software, but from our first view on it, it looks pretty incredible. I do wanna play around with the top lens a bit more, so I think we might just use some of these pebbles here and then use it in the background. So what we can also do, we can go over to Aperture, and this is where it'll kick it in. So we'll tap on the foreground, in fact, we'll get a bit lower. Tap on the foreground, and we'll just take a picture. Let's see how well that performs. Yeah, so you can see the bleed off and that's really, really nice. You can really see how it really takes it from a certain point and it just blends it. You can even see in the foreground actually, you can just see it coming in and then going out and it's a lot smoother and a lot more realistic. You would definitely mistake that for it being a picture taken by a much larger camera like a mirrorless or a DSLR. Just gotta try that one more time. Let's see if we can find something a bit more interesting to put in the foreground. Let's see. There we go. As a photographer, you gotta sometimes make your subject rather than find your subject. So we're just gonna make this quickly. Let's find a flatter. There we go. balancing stones on the fly. Right, now will do. So now we're just gonna try it again. Go a little further back. Take a picture. Take a picture. All right, let's see. See how well it does. Yeah, it's pretty much got that as well. So it's got that subject, our stones in focus, and it just blends out that background to it's almost seamless. Yeah, it's really accurate. That's really convincing. That's really, really convincing. Because what I was quite surprised by is if you see, because there's a bit of a ledge here, and you think, oh, it's just cut over the ledge and just blended on from there, but it hasn't. It really has seen where the distance changes and has blended it, uh, has blended it accordingly. That's, that's pretty impressive. For a phone, this is really impressive. Definitely a feature people should be trying. This will definitely get you out using, because with phones, you tend to just get it out, use it in photo mode, and that's it. But do try aperture mode. This is really, really clever. Very, very clever, in fact. So in video as well, you still have control over those different zooms. So you're not losing out on all the joy of using the periscope zoom and the digital zoom at 10 times. You still got that available. Now I won't go into hit and record on the phone now, otherwise it will just stop the phone recording, but you can still video at 10 times and you can go down to five times and then one time. So in video mode, you'll be, you'll be very, glad to know that you can still get 4k even up to 10 times which is quite surprising to us we were half expecting them just to keep it to one times and then maybe the wide angle but to have it for all four stages that's pretty incredible so you can use 4k so we just turn around quickly you can use 4k and you can get things from a distance that's really cool also got a helicopter up there as well let's see if we can try and find them there we go there's a helicopter, that's cool. And you've also got control over how the picture looks, so you can play around with that as well. We'll just go into one times. I don't see many people using this, 
I think most people just use it for the video, but it's a nice touch. There is also the beauty level. I've seen that being available for a lot of different features. If you go to portrait mode as well, the beauty level is available. Many people probably won't use this. It's just not one of those features that jumps out at people to use, you know, the idea that you can smooth your face. But it's there, it's a nice touch, but most likely won't be used. If we just go back to photo, you can really see that this is a camera designed for photographers. They really haven't skipped a beat in designing something. They did have the black and white camera uh, that was featured on the P20 Pro. That was nice to use, but in many cases, most people didn't use it unless they were really into black and white. If you were just going out doing happy snaps, then you would have wished to have something else. And now we finally got that something else in the P30 Pro. So one of the key features that we're very interested in is the 40 megapixel sensor. We were half expecting Huawei to come in with a new 48 megapixel sensor like we saw with the Honor View 20. But what they've done is they've redesigned the way that the sensor worked. So rather than having red, green, blue, like we traditionally see in a Bear Array sensor lineup, what they've done is they've removed the green and they've opted for a yellow, yellow. Now, by doing this, what they've enabled the camera to do is work better at low light. Now, understandably, green is part of the primary color sector and you link up the three colors, red, green, blue, and that is able to dictate and correct what colors it's seeing and translate those onto a screen for us. But using a new type of color science that Huawei's had to work on to be able to do this is by using yellow as a lighter color, it can pick up on details and light a lot better. So it's low light is much more improved compared to the P20 Pro. And that again was already a very good phone at the time. So with that, with the P20 Pro, you could get 102,000 ISO. That's no problem. Now this one can do 409,000 ISO, which means that if you're shooting in incredibly low lit conditions, you can have the confidence that this camera can do that. And we'll show some photos of what we've done over the night so you can see what kind of low light images we've been getting. And that's something Huawei is very, very proud of with their P30 is enabling it not to just have a nice range of lenses to choose from, but also have a very good sensor to work from because as great as it is to have all these lenses, what's really important is to have the right sensor. Now the 40 megapixel sensor is only available on the 27 mil which means if you do want to get and get to see those colors, you do have to use just the one times or go in and change the settings to 40 megapixels to really see what it can do. But overall, it's a very, very impressive camera. And the wide angle, we're really happy they kept with that. We're really happy to use it. It's very, very good for landscapes. But if we just take a scene here, if we just have a look on my camera quickly, if I just go one times down to wide, you can see how it really opens up the scene. And as a photographer it's really nice to have that choice because the worst thing that could happen is you get to a location you can't move back and you get 27 mil it's a great focal length to start off with but for some cases you may want something that can get a bit wider and having that wider option gives you a bit more room to play you can get a bit closer they've also included super macro so you can get two centimeters close to the camera and it will focus on that subject, which is really good when you're doing macro, taking pictures of very, very fine flowers and still getting an array around them as well, rather than just focused on and isolating that one single flower. Oh, flies everywhere. Now, if we just go to five times, it is quite a jump. We did wish they would have something like a three times, like an in-between that would be optical, but we will accept the fact that they wanted to really show what they could do with the five times. That really is the only issue we have with the cameras is that the five times is a big jump from one times. So if we just do that one more time on the screen, one times, five times. There's no in between. If we just dial it up to about three times about there, that would be like a nice sort of middle ground to have. And maybe you've opted away from the 10 times. But saying that we have used the 10 times, we have enjoyed using the 10 times and it has been very, very crystal clear when we've been shooting with it. Now, obviously you won't go ahead and you, you won't print it because if you do, you'll see the pixels. But if you're posting this on social media, it really won't be an issue. But just using five times as well, very clean, very precise. You've also got optical image stabilization to support you. So it's not moving around and going all over the place. You can hold it still and it will counteract your movements and you can just go ahead and start taking pictures. That's been really, really helpful. Now going into video, 
you've still got full control over those zoom features, you've still got full HD, and you can use those features with 4K, which is a very big surprise for us. Normally when you see a camera phone come out and you go to 4K, all the settings that they're raving about just disappear and you're just down to the bare basics. But Huawei have really kept to it and they've enabled us to really stay in control of the camera and we can still use the zoom features in 4K as we would in 1080. Now, one of the other features as well, as we've just spoken about, is low light. And they've definitely given users a lot more choice than that. You can do light painting. You can take a bit more control in that. You've also got your pro mode as well. So you can go in here, you can change your eyes, so you can play around with that. And you can just get more and more in control of the camera and really take control and get pictures you want rather than letting the camera do the work. And you can also shoot in RAW, which is nice, but I think in most cases, if you're a user, you'll be really, really happy with the JPEGs. There's still plenty of room for there to be played with, but if you're someone who likes to take control of the imagery from the offset, using the RAWs are very good. Do bear in mind though, with RAWs, they do take a lot of work. So be patient with them and you will get the results that you're after. But using the AI that Huawei is very famous for, and using the software that they worked so hard on, just the JPEGs alone are perfect enough. And with the implementation of using Leica in their lenses, you really can't go wrong when it comes to image quality. So that's another win for Huawei and the P30 Pro. With low light, you still got the infamous night mode as well. But even if you're in low light, if you go into photo, what it will do is it will really push the ISO for you and you can really draw things out of the dark. But using the night mode, it helps maintain the detail and gets all the finer bits and pieces that you need. So for example, if we're down by the trees and we're trying to get pictures of the moon as well as the trees, it'll work a lot harder to make sure that the trees don't go grainy or try and get all the details of the leaves and also trying to maintain the moon as well, which is a very, very important thing when you want to take pictures at night is maintaining your exposure because one exposure could maintain one area and then completely ruin another, another part of the photo. Another thing, another area that Huawei have improved on is HDR. And for those that don't know, it's high dynamic range. So it brings out the shadows, brings out the highlights, and nothing's blown out or underexposed. And they've done one step further, and they're now using best portrait and HDR together. And what it will do is, in a single image, it will figure out what needs to be exposed and what needs to be underexposed in the same image. With a camera, you don't get that choice. It's just one exposure, one ISO, and then that's it. That's all you get. With this, it'll expose one part of the photo differently to another because it's not using a shutter mechanism system. So if I just use our cameraman quickly, you can see what I mean by that. So if we just go into HDR, let's turn the screen recording on. HDR, thank you very much. So we're just gonna tap on our friend Jack, the cameraman, who's currently manning the camera. Take a quick picture and snap. Take control. Now if we just go into the area, you can see what it's done. So it's maintained shadows, and it's also maintained the highlights. Now there is a fair bit of sharpening there, but that's what you would partly expect to see in HDR. When you do see HDR images, you will see strong silhouetting and haloing, which if you see around the leg here, you can see that white, which is more so the light reflecting off of the jeans, but that is slightly enhanced through HDR. But if you're going out and you've got a strong backlit um, scene and you've got a subject in front of it, you can be confident using this phone, you can take a picture with the sun being behind the subject, get a very, very nice shot indeed. But just using the phone in general, it's really easy to get the shots that you want and be able to go out and line up a scene. I mean, we've just got a person sitting here. We can really zoom into them, really focus on them. We can tap on them and we can move exposure as well. And we can get some really nice frames. And the five times really does come in handy quite a bit. In fact, I see myself as a photographer, probably using the five times, I'd bit more than the wide angle but that will be down to circumstances but having the option to zoom you'll definitely take advantage of it it's giving you a lot clearer images it's a lot easier to use and it's very very intuitive there aren't many points points or aspects of the camera that we would try and improve we would just say to Huawei keep doing what they're doing uh, maybe have a look at offering a fifth camera uh, being a three times or 
figure out a way to get a moving system in one of the lenses but still maintaining the quality that would be a nice bonus but there really isn't much that they've done they've definitely improved upon the p20 pro that is for certain they've made some good choices the top lens really does it for us when it comes to blending in the background and giving it a more convincing look it beats the cutting out and shaping that we've seen before so it's much more accurate in that department and just overall the p30 pro is a much smarter phone they don't seem to push ai as much in this phone but it is still available you still got the master ai which if we hold up to the scene right now it's saying it's cloudy if we tap somewhere quickly see if it changes no nope, but it's definitely helping us maintain the details it's now saying beach there we go and if you actually go in there you can see what it's done it's boosted up the greens sorry let me just get it loaded up you can see what it's doing in the uh, AI mode has really brought out the blues in the sky, really sharpened up the clouds as well. So you've got some nice outlines of the clouds and it looks a lot sharper. It's also warmed up the horizon a bit more as well. And that's what the AI is really good for, is bringing out those details that you want to help make the picture. And the AI does really well. One of the other things that AI has really worked on and what Huawei have really worked on is when you're taking pictures, the over sharpening isn't crazy. Before when you take a picture, it would really highlight the details and you can see it really pump the clarity up. But when you go over to 10 times, that's only when you're gonna see it. But you're working with a four megapixel image and they're trying to do their best to make it look as good as all the others. And it does really well. But just going from even the wide angle, you don't get that horrible HDR look when you go into the photos. Everything's sharp. There is sharpening there. That's what happens with phones, they will sharpen it. But the overall detail and clarity is absolutely incredible. So if you're after a phone to potentially replace a small compact or you want an excuse not to buy another camera, but an excuse to get this phone, the lenses should pretty much do that for you. So what we're gonna do is to show what the RAW file is gonna do. We're just gonna go over to Pro, just gonna double check that we have RAW set on. So if we just double check everything, oh, it's not showing us in the menu there screen recorder that's rolling so saying we're shooting raw so we'll accept that it's shooting raw you still got control so you don't have the 10 times you do have the five times so we're just going to tap on the subject here and I'm trying to focus on the highlights a bit just so we can try to get a more balanced picture using that technique where you tap on the subject and then you drag your exposure point somewhere else there we go right so now that we have those we're going to go out we're now going to go into Lightroom. Two photos successfully added. We're now going to go into here. So this is our raw photo that we're going to play with. It's just going to load that up. So we have a bit more control. So we can go into light. You can see how much we can play with. So you can see it's picking up on the details and the stones at the bottom. If we drag it down, it's still maintaining highlights as well. So if we just drag it down just a little bit, scroll down, bring the shadows up as well. And then just see what else you want to play with. I always say when you're editing, just kind of move the toggle backwards and forwards till you get something that you like. Then pause, go down to whites, do the same thing, maybe a little higher on the blacks. Yeah, there we go. I'm feeling for this one, it might be better as a black and white image, but I want to make sure that contrast is there and those details are there. So we're just going to brighten some areas up, just brought the exposure up. Just going to check on the curve as well, play with the curve, see what kind of details we can get there. And then we're going to hit done. We also do a little auto, see what that says. Actually, I do like that. I think we'll go with what auto is saying. Just scroll along. Temperature as well, you can play with that. Won't mean so much when you're in black and white because it will just correct it and the color difference won't make a change in your imagery in black and white. Go back to exposure, play around with it a bit more, like so. So you keep it in black and white. Play with lens profiles. Probably won't be available for this one. Won't touch that either. Let's go over to geometry. No. So these are our options for the presets. So we've got monochrome. We just go black and white. There's 17 different versions. So you can flick through these, change how aggressive they are as well. I don't want anything that's going to attack the highlights too much. So we'll go with I think we'll go with that one there, that's quite pleasant. Just make it a bit more aggressive and then hit tick. And that's our final image for that one. 
So if we change, let's go and take another picture somewhere. So we'll just take one more picture. So with this one, we'll probably go a bit wider, get more of the details of the sun. So we'll focus there and we'll just kind of shift it a bit further down. Just so we've got a bit of a balanced image taking the picture. There we go. And we're gonna go into Lightroom again. Go back. Oopsie, wrong back. Swing back there. Add a photo. Add that raw. Add. Tap on that. So now we're gonna really play with the raw file and really see what it can achieve. I do know there's data there, so we're just gonna go into here, go into our shadows. Drag that up just to see what's available. So you can see it's very grainy. So we really have pushed that raw file quite a bit. So we're just going to bring it up a little bit. Exposure. Have a play with that as well. And see what it's doing there. Or we could just go straight into artistic and we just, just go crazy with it. Play around with the different options. There's a bit of a pink hue there as well, which is quite interesting. We'll just dial that down and then just hit tick. And we'll play around with color so we can make it a little bit warmer. But really, what we're not so much testing what we can bring out of the pictures, but more so what kind of control we have over the raw files and seeing how it plays around with us pushing its limits. But it really is handling it quite well. I'm going to play with the highlights just to see what that does as well. Highlights, you get quite a bit of control out of actually. Yeah, you really can control those highlights quite a bit. I'm just gonna bring it down to about there. I'm just gonna bring up the contrast a little bit. And then the whites, see how that does. Bring the whites up. Blacks again does touch on the shadows a little bit. We'll just drag those down. And I think there's our final image. So just in the matter of 30, 40 seconds, I've really got an image that I quite like. Just straight from going shoot to edit, very easy. And that is one of the perks of using Huawei and using Lightroom as a breeze. The Kieran processor handles it a dream, so trying to edit isn't a problem. And overall, if you're out to shoot, you will not have a problem using this phone. And that's our overview of the Huawei P30 Pro. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, my name's Luke, this is Photobite, and we'll see you next time.